Live coding is one of the most fun and beneficial things you can do. I've been live coding my startup on Twitch for over a year and it's changed my life. By the end of this video, you'll be all set up to run your own live coding stream on Twitch. Let's get started. Couple common questions. Number one, do you need a crazy machine or computer to stream? Absolutely not. As long as your machine is less than like five or seven years old, you should be fine. If you can run Android Studio and watch a YouTube video, you could probably pull off a stream. Uh, but if you're running like a MacBook 2010, you might have some trouble. Only way to find out is to try, so move on. Uh, second off, do you need crazy good internet to stream? Absolutely not, actually. Uh, fun fact, the required speeds for streaming are really low. Uh, if you can get up to like 5-ish Mbps, 6-ish Mbps upload, you can run a 720p stream at 30 FPS, which is good enough for a programming stream, so don't worry about it. You're fine. First thing we're going to need to get started is actual streaming software. I'm going to take you through how to download OBS, by far the most common software. Don't use Streamlabs, they suck as a company. To find OBS, just go to obsproject.com. You can Google it, but to be safe, just type this in and click whatever download you need. It's super straightforward. Once you've got it downloaded, uh, go ahead and click on File in the top left of OBS, the absolute top left. Click Settings. Click Stream. Click Twitch for the service, and then hit Connect Account. Don't do the stream key setup. Be sure to connect your account. It's way better. I'll tell you why later. Once you're all logged in, we can start setting up our scenes. Now you may be wondering, I already had you sign up with Twitch. Why would you stream on Twitch as opposed to YouTube? I'm going to give you a very short answer to this, which is Twitch right now is just much better for live coding in my opinion. There's a whole community there and it is built for live streaming. YouTube is getting there. YouTube is getting better, but there is much less of a community, much less of a shared resource, much less likelihood that you would do well as a new streamer. So I recommend Twitch, full stop. For any programming stream, I recommend having your camera in the corner, uh, and I recommend that you have at least a little bit of very, very basic room setup. I'm not going to go super into this, but two main things are just try and keep your background relatively clean don't have a whole lot of nonsense in there uh, and if you can add like things that cater to you as a person so if you really like video games throw some video game posters up or like some programming posters or anything any little stuff like that can actually help a lot uh, once you have this camera set up uh, even if this is just your laptop camera that's totally fine it really doesn't need to be that good we can get to adding it into a scene in obs and if you're wondering if you need some crazy kind of microphone for streaming, you absolutely don't. AirPod microphones, fine. Headset mics, fine. Uh, even if you have little earbuds with a microphone on them, it's fine. The only thing I would avoid using is like just a true laptop microphone if you can, but even then, it's pretty okay. And a little bit down the line, I'm going to give you a piece of software you can use to add some noise canceling that will help with that. So don't worry too much about the microphone. First thing we're going to do to get started with OBS is make a new scene. Scenes are just different screens you can swap to that are showing things for your stream. We're going to have two or three main ones, but this first one we're going to call screen. So hit this little plus in the bottom left corner near the scenes thing and type screen, hit OK, and you'll have pretty much nothing. Ignore my audio. So there's three main things that you want to add to this scene. Number one, you're going to want some sort of window capture. So I'm going to recommend in this case, just for people who are starting, I always recommend a window capture. Uh, we're going to call this VS Code. Okay. And then we're going to find my VS Code window just by scrolling through here. Uh, Visual Studio Code. Great. And now you can see my code. Hooray! So number one thing done. The second thing we're going to hit is plus, and we're going to do a video capture device, a.k.a. camera. Uh, for this example, I'm going to use my laptop cam, uh, which I already have set up, but I'll make a new one just for you guys. I'll just call it laptop cam 2. Uh, so what you're seeing right now is actually a separate camera that I have, but this is my laptop camera. So if I grab my laptop camera, you can see it's just grabbing the integrated webcam. Hello. The background is less pretty on this side of the room because I don't use this camera. Uh, and we're just going to hit OK. Won't worry too much about defaults and all these settings, really. Uh, the big thing that I would recommend is just that you keep this camera in a 16 by 9 ratio if you can, if it is that good. I know this is a very weird scene because there's two of me at two different angles. Uh, but what you're going to want to do, I recommend you generally just throw yourself in the bottom right and make yourself kind of small, but not too small. 
and I would maybe adjust the camera if you can uh, so that you're a little bit more centered. So I'd maybe be sitting a little bit higher if I were using that camera. But there we go. Now we got two out of three. Now the third thing you may be wondering, well, you got the camera, you got the screen. What else is there to add? You actually have to add your microphone separately. Otherwise, the audio from the microphone will not come in. So we're going to add audio input capture. And I'm going to do a new one. And I'm going to say my main microphone. Great. And we're going to grab my blue star ball, this guy. Hooray. And so now when I talk, you can see this bar lights up. And it gets a little red, which means that maybe my microphone's a little too close to my face. Uh, and that's going to be my microphone. And so now people will be able to hear me when I go live on this scene. If I don't put my microphone in the scene, you won't be able to hear me. And finally, we're going to add one little extra thing, which is an audio output capture. And the reason for this is if you want to play music or if you want people to be able to hear what you do, for some of you, this will show up by default, not for all of you. So you're going to want to add some kind of computer audio setting, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to find something like my speakers where I put all my music. Bang. And just like that, any of the audio that comes through my speakers should play. So if I open up Spotify and I find some DMCA free music and I just start playing this for like two seconds. Oh, actually you won't hear it because I have complicated audio setups, but that's not the point. The point is now you've got your audio, you've got your microphone and you've got your camera. This is the absolute most basic main screen you can have for uh, live stream. The other thing that I'm going to recommend is that you make at least one more scene for when you need to hide your screen, which is just going to be a full cam. So we're going to call this full cam. And literally all you're going to do is you're going to add two things. Again, you're going to add a video capture device. We already made a laptop camera, so I'm just going to add this back in, but this time I'm going to full screen it. Whoa, big me at multiple angles. Uh, and then we're going to add in the microphone again. So we're going to do existing, because I've already done it, and we're going to add my main microphone. And maybe if I want to be able to still play music on here, I can also add the computer audio, right? And so now what if I want to do, like, let's say that I'm going to go do some API key stuff, or I'm going to go make a few changes, I can swap to this screen for a second and just be like, hey, just look at my face for a sec, don't worry about it too much, uh, and then come back to the screen when I'm done with that. Cool? Cool. That's the absolute basics of just the scene setup. As far as equipment goes, don't worry about it too much. This will be enough to get you going. To run a successful programming stream, you really want to have a chatbot. Chatbot gives you the ability to have canned responses to questions that people ask all the time. Like, what's this project about? Or what are you working on today? Or what languages are you using? The chatbot I recommend is Fossabot. Uh, you can just go to fossabot.com, spelled like this, and hit open dashboard. Once you got the dashboard open, it'll look like this. Uh, go to the bottom and authorize it with Twitch. Second, have the bot join the channel. And it's going to tell you to type please mod Fossabot by typing slash mod Fossabot. So we say OK. The bot is now in my channel. You can see it says join the bot channel. And in this little Twitch chat in the corner, I'm just going to paste what it gave me slash mod Fossabot. It'll ask you to log in. But once you've logged in, you'll get a little message that says Fossabot was added as a moderator and you're good to go. From there, you can go into this commands section and create commands with an exclamation point before them. So if I wanted to create an example command, I could do exclamation point, um, my project. And I could have the command response be, uh, I'm working on a video teaching you how to become a tech streamer. Ignore pretty much all of these settings, and we hit create command. And just like that, if I go to my own little chat box now, and I type my project, just move it over a little bit so you can see it here in the corner, my project. I'm working on a video teaching you how to become a tech streamer. And just like that, it works. What you'll do from there is generally in the title of your stream, you'll put the commands that people should know to run, like exclamation point task, exclamation point project, stuff like that. The three commands I always recommend having are today, project, and schedule. You should have a stream schedule. I'll let you figure that out. But having those three, I feel like, is the absolute minimum that you're going to want to have to run a successful stream where people can very quickly catch up on what you're doing, which will be a common problem as people come in and out of your stream throughout you working for hours and hours and hours.
One of the most important parts of Twitch is Twitch chat. One of the most important parts of streaming is talking to your chat. And if you have any desire to record your Twitch content or reuse it at all, you want to have your chat visible on the screen in the recording in what's called a chat overlay. There's a lot of different chat overlays. I'm going to recommend you two different ones, and then I'm going to show you how to put them into OBS. So the first one I'm going to recommend is Stream Parrot. Stream Parrot is actually in beta. It's a very specific one uh, that not many people use, but I love the heck out of it. And if I swap to my actual main screen, you'll be able to see right here, this is what Stream Parrot looks like. Stream Parrot's really cool because it has super fun and like hackery uh, different themes. So I really like it. It's made by another programming streamer, CM Griffin, super cool guy, but it is in like super pre-beta. So that's a little bit of a risk. If you want to take that risk, go ahead. If you don't want to take that risk, that's also fine. Um, assuming that you don't, CapChat is a very, very common one. Nightdev.com slash CapChat will get you there. Uh, and it gets all the little BTTV emotes. Very, very important. Very, very wonderful. Once you have one of these, the way that you add them to OBS is pretty straightforward. So I'll show you Stream Parrot as an example. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and sign into Stream Parrot. We're going to find my overlay. And what they'll normally do is say, copy this URL and paste it in the URL as your OBS browser source. Now, I won't get too into what these are, but basically a lot of things on streams are just tiny little websites with transparent backgrounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our pre-existing screen scene. We're going to hit the little plus to add something, and we're going to scroll until we see browser. And this is going to be the stream parrot chat. Okay. And it's going to give me a URL I can set. And I'm going to just paste in the URL that I was given and hit OK. And so now if I move this here, if anybody says anything in chat right now, it'll all show up in this little box and I can resize it. I like to put it right above my camera, uh, but it's entirely up to you. So we can see a little bit of a cat jam here from Jens. Anything that anybody says will show up there. The reason this is really good is because in your recordings, this makes the interaction and the story feel much more like people are there. So I heavily, 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 heavily recommend it. And again, I really like Stream Parrot in particular because it's kind of cool. People really like the hackery vibe. So get creative with your styling if you can. A lot of the tools have different styling, but just make sure you have something like this. If you don't have the best microphone, your microphone might have some background noise. You can download a lot of different noise canceling softwares to cover this. The one I recommend is crisp.ai. It's pretty much free to try. And if you refer enough people to it, it's free. Uh, you can also pay for it. I've referred enough people that I've never had to pay for it, and I'm going to give you a referral link in the description. But to clarify just how good Crisp is, uh, this is my mic without Crisp on. So now, if I stop talking, you're going to hear a lot more background noise. You're going to hear a lot more of fans on my computer and everything. But I can just click this little box, and magically, it all goes away. So again, you don't need a crazy high quality microphone to make things sound good. All you want to do is go to crisp.ai. I will give you a link in the description as well if you want to use my referral link so I can keep using it for free because it is a wonderful piece of software that I would also happily pay for. All right, now I told you having a chat bot was really important and I told you having an overlay was really important and both of those things are very true, but this is actually probably the most important thing that a lot of very early streamers get wrong and this is having alerts. Uh, alerts and overlays on Twitch are very important because it gives you a little pop-up when somebody follows and it gives you a little pop-up when somebody subscribes or donates money or anything. And you always want to be aware of those things so you can throw out a thank you and be interactive. The easiest way to get alerts and the best software that nobody hates uh, is Stream Elements. So head over to StreamElements.com and hit Go to Dashboard. And we're just going to really quickly make an example one here. Uh, so I believe it's under Streaming Tools. Go to Overlays Gallery click on alerts, uh, and you can really just pick any one that you like that you think looks cool. Uh, for this example, let's go with uh, Royal Red. That seems fun. Sure. And we're going to hit create a new overlay and continue. We'll just leave it as Royal Red, create, and it's going to give me this scene link. Now again, we've learned about browser sources. So we're going to pop back to our little OBS screen here, and we're going to add a browser source, and this one's going to be called alerts. Now in this case, we're going to paste this, and the important one with this is you want to make it the full size of your screen. 
So my screen in this case is 1920 by 1080. Yours might not be. Be sure to get your resolution. And you're going to hit OK. And it's going to look like nothing's there. But if we pop back over here, I'm going to hit Go to My Overlays. I'm going to hit Edit. And we're going to get to see kind of the build. So you can see that all the overlay uh, alerts will pop up here. I'm going to hit Emulate Follower Event. And now if you look at my stream, look at that. This little guy popped up. That's literally all that it takes. So now, when anybody follows the stream, I'll get that happy little pop-up for a few seconds, and I'll hear that noise. And those two things are very, very, very important, and literally just took me 30 seconds to set up completely from zero. Uh, don't worry too much about having the best alerts or the perfect alerts or crazy cool style alerts. You know, look around for something that you like. Once you got something that works, it's good. Take it. Move on to the next thing. Any good content creator will tell you that if you're going to do content successfully, you want to have analytics. Twitch gives you really good analytics on your stream. I'm going to show you where to find them very quickly. And then we're going to talk about how to make sure you get them in your email, because I think this is very important for you to stay up to date on your analytics without needing to check every time. So uh, find your way to dashboard.twitch.tv. Once you've got this open, this will give you your stream manager. Hello, I'm streaming right now. Uh, you're going to want to go to Insights, Stream Summary. And this will give you your exact stats for each stream that you've had ever. So I can scroll back to yesterday's stream, stream the day before, back and forth forever. Now, if you want to actually get these in your email, which I heavily recommend, open up just twitch.tv, hit the top right, and click on Settings. Once you're in Settings, scroll over to Notifications. Now, this is very dumb. By email, make sure you have all emails checked because this does not mean you get all the emails. This means you get any emails. It's really dumb. Scroll down, check stream stats, and I would recommend that you check marketing because it lets you get the yearly summaries, which are fun. So make sure you have these two checked and you'll get analytics in your inbox after every stream that'll make you feel super cool. Run the best stream that you can with tech. There's a lot of Twitch settings that most people don't really know about or wouldn't think to set. So we're going to go really quickly through every single Twitch setting and what you should have it set to, to kind of run the safest and most effective first stream that you can. Uh, so to get started with this, just head over to dashboard.twitch.tv, click on settings and click on stream. So first thing you want to do, uh, you might not have all of these settings uh, depending on your account, but if you do have them, put them to these settings. Uh, turn on disconnect protection. Uh, it's just a helpful thing. In case your internet cuts out for 20 seconds, it won't totally stop and restart your stream. For latency mode, you're going to want low latency. Uh, the more real time that you are in your stream, the better off you are, period, the end. Uh, it's just way, way, way better if people can talk to you within like a few seconds instead of like 20 or 30. Uh, store past broadcasts. Have this on. Let people watch your recordings. It Most people don't watch them, but once you have a little bit of a community, they might actually take some time and watch them. It doesn't hurt you at all. Uh, just hit always publish VODs. No exclusions. Great. Uh, enable clips. Also very important. Let people make highlights of your stuff. No exclusions. Followers only off. Followers only off on this. There's no reason to have that on. Uh, subscriber only also off. Uh, permissions, don't worry about these. Raid, allow all raids. Please, oh my god, let people raid you. It is super important. Drops don't really matter too much, but go ahead and have those set. All right, moving on to channel. So this is super, super, super important. Uh, please, oh my god, do not skip this step. Set a bio and put in your links. <coughs> so this segment is like the first thing that people see when they hop onto your channel. Right? If I come to my Twitch channel right now, literally you're just going to see my stream, and then you immediately see my about, my links, and these panels that we'll talk about in a sec. So to set this, you're just going to want to scroll down and set your bio. I would use as many characters as you can, and just talk about you. Say where you came from, give a little bit of your story. The more color you can paint into your kind of background and what you've done, like not just technically everybody's worked at a company or this or that, but like tell a little bit about who you are uh, and like where you came from very 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 helpful and obviously go down to the social links add all of your socials out of youtube add an instagram add a twitter i would recommend that you make a discord server and link it here for your chat uh, and if you want to like me you can also add links to projects if you'd like but you only get five so be sure to be careful with which ones you choose to do great okay moderation 
auto mod rule sets. Auto mod is Twitch's magic default moderation bot. That's basically the thing that com stops people from coming in and saying a bunch of like super curse words and bad things in your chat. This is a little bit controversial. I'm going to recommend that you come into auto mod and you either leave it on default uh, or you turn everything to max for when you're first starting out streaming. Because honestly, you really don't want to be hearing bad stuff. You don't want to put yourself at risk. Worst case, if we get totally wrecked and people say a bunch of bad stuff, uh, you have the opportunity to approve it or not approve it. It just gives you a little bit more control. This isn't really something you super need to worry about, but I don't want to see any of you get like a bad raid or people come in and just say a bunch of bad stuff. Uh, so keep yourself safe, at least when you're starting out until you get to the point where you've done enough that you're comfortable with changing these settings. But I would go as far as you might even want to put on maximum filtering for a lot of stuff. Okay. Now, uh, don't touch this, don't touch this. Uh, you can block links. This is actually a pretty good thing to do for safety. I keep it off personally because I don't mind, but you probably want that. Uh, chat verification, I would keep this off. I would keep email verification off and phone number verification off, and I would not touch any of these. This is a thing that Twitch did to kind of prevent bots from spamming you, which is good, but to be honest, it's going to kind of prevent more people from coming to your chat. Most people aren't double verified on Twitch. So I wouldn't worry about it. As long as you've got auto mod on pretty high, you should be safe. Uh, chat rules. People will read this about 50% of the time. So make it short and sweet. Uh, be super honest. A lot of people will be like, don't be racist. Don't be terrible. Don't say this. Don't do that. Which is like good and helpful. Uh, I personally am of the opinion of just like super straightforward. Like don't suck. Run this command. That's it. You know? uh is kind of how i like to feel about it but people will see this in your chat when they first join and they have to click i accept or like okay uh so everybody that joins your chat for the first time will see this once so be aware of that uh unban requests don't worry about this followers mode make sure this is off you want people to be able to chat in your stream when they first see you subscriber only chat same thing keep it off uh and mod tools in chat you're going to want to keep that on for any mods that you make Whew. okay Finally, we have panels. So this is a weird one. You have to actually open your own Twitch channel. <clears throat> so I'm on twitch.tv slash rockstar74, and I scroll down, and there's this tiny little checkbox uh, toggle right here. And when I turn it on, I can edit what these panels are that you see. Now, these panels, you can put pretty much anything. Uh, you can put links to your merch. You can put stuff about you. You can put a donation link. You can put a subscription link and talk a little bit and add some color. I'm not going to recommend super explicitly what you put here. Having the rules in there, having donations in there, having a little bit of an about and a story is really good. But the main, main, main thing that I recommend is something like this. Weirdly enough, this story so far thing is the thing that the most people have taken from my stream and the thing that most people <coughs> have seen that in that leads them to either immediately follow or immediately subscribe because it gives a ton of color to who i am and what i've done even though it seems really long give people the opportunity to learn more about you and come to like you give people a lot to work with before they even send that first chat message this is a really big deal and very few people actually do this. But I have had at least a dozen times somebody just come into my chat, say nothing, instantly subscribe, which gives me money, and just say, dude, just read your story, inspirational, keep grinding. That's without me saying a word. That is how powerful this can be. Do not skip this. Please, oh my god. It is so important. That's most of the things that we're going to need to do on the actual Twitch website. Music on stream. Uh, it's for programming streams a bit debatable. Some people really like it. Uh, some people prefer to have it silent so that other people can play their own music. I personally like to set a vibe. I personally really like to play music on stream. If you also want to play music on stream and you also want to be able to set that vibe, uh, play DMCA free music. That probably sounds difficult. It's not. I'm going to give you the number one place to find it, which is uh, any streaming music streaming software, just look up Stream Beats. Stream Beats by Harris Heller uh, is a company that just produces entirely DMCA free music. It's all on YouTube. It's all on Spotify. It's all on Apple uh, Music. Anywhere, whatever you've got, 
just play this music top to bottom. They've got lo-fi, they've got EDM, they've got hardcore, they've got chill beats, whatever you want, it's here. Uh, and this will keep you safe from DMCA and just give you a really, really, really easy place to start if you want to play music, which I do recommend. One of the things you're probably wondering is, if I'm going to do live coding, how do I hide my secrets? What if API keys show up? What if I have to check my email and everything? Now, the easy solution to this is you can just switch to your camera and just focus on the camera for a minute and people can just look at your face. But if you want a much cooler solution, I'm going to include something really, really awesome from my friend Luce, who got it from Sociable Steve, which is how to actually add a blur filter. And that blur filter makes it so that your screen goes from looking like this to looking like this. So we're gonna build that in really quickly. So the way that this is done, uh, and I'm gonna link this article in the description, so if you don't wanna follow, don't worry yet. Uh, in OBS, we're gonna add another display capture. Uh, so what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna take the screen that we made earlier. Uh, we're going to, here's how I like to do it. We're gonna just duplicate this, and we're gonna call this blurred screen. Boop. Uh, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this VS Code thing, uh, we're going to delete it and add it back as a new window capture. VS Code Blurred. Find our way back to code.exe. OK. And now let's go back to here. Right click on the source and select filters. Great. So I'm literally just going to follow this along with you guys. Uh, make sure to put it below so that your camera is on top always. Uh, we're going to click on filters right here. Tab back. Click the plus button in the window and add scaling slash aspect ratio. So hit plus, scaling aspect ratio, uh, blur. We're going to set it to point. I believe we set the resolution to 160 by 90, if I'm right. Great. There we are. Uh, and then we're going to right click on it in its tiny version. We're going to hit scale filtering and we're going to click point. And now it's going to look super small. But the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to blow it up. And just like that, we've got a happy little blurred screen. And so now you can swap between your regular screen and your blurred screen by swapping between these two scenes. And later we'll get into how to do that easily. All right, now let's talk about how to run a stream that doesn't suck. Looking at your OBS screen now, you'll notice two things on the left and right, which is your actual stream information, uh, your go live notification, your title, and your chat. Have this up. I recommend putting this on a second monitor if you have it, or pulling up the chat on your phone or something. You want to always keep an eye on it. The most important thing with streaming is being interactive. And for that to happen, you need to have the chat up on your screen. On top of that, there are a few very specific tags and categories that you're going to want to take a look at so that you're on the right part of Twitch when you go live. So in this section on the left, make sure under your category, you're covered under software and game development, or if you're doing something more like a keyboard stream or something more like, uh, like chemistry or like just STEM in general, uh, you can also go into science and technology, but I heavily, heavily, heavily recommend for 90% of people go into software and game development. Once you've set that category, you should also go into your tags. I would add software development. If you're doing web development, they have a tag for that. Be sure to add that. It's really important. If you're doing mobile development, add that. That's also a tag. And they have language tags. So add the tag of whatever language you're using. These tags are used for people to find you on Twitch. People will search for streams that have web development. You may think to yourself, Twitch has a really small programming community. Do people really use this tag? Yes. Yes, they do. 100%. It's actually crazy how frequently this comes up. Please, oh my god, set these tags. It's so easy. Uh, on top of that, this may seem dumb, but the title of your stream is absurdly important. Absurdly. It is the number one thing that leads people to join your stream. And I can absolutely tell you that if I change my title to something like, I'm going to make $1,000 today, I will literally get twice as many people coming in. And just remember, it's not clickbait if it's true. So just say true things and just make $1,000 or something. But always be creative with your titles. Always be creative with your go live notifications. But when it comes to tags and it comes to category, just pick the right ones. Okay, super quick note that most people will not think of, oh my God, zoom in on your code. This, this is how big my code is all the time. I want you to compare this to your editor. If you have me full screen, compare it to your editor. Here's what you probably are looking at. 
Something like this. Nobody on Twitch can see this. You can see it. You can work through it. Zoom in so much. Zoom in until it's uncomfortably big and then maybe one level lower. This is like the smallest I would go. But seriously, if you don't zoom in your code, people can't see it and it will really, really, really ruin the immersion. So please, oh my God, zoom in on your code. In terms of mods or chat moderators, when you're getting started, you really don't have to worry about it too much. You're not going to have a whole ton of people showing up to stream. But if you feel like you need early moderators, generally the best way to do it is just find a couple friends who are willing to hang out on your stream and just keep an eye on the chat while you're all doing whatever you're doing, coding together or something, or people who like to watch you, and just mod a couple people that you trust in real life until eventually you find mods through the community. Uh, modding someone is super easy. You just type slash mod space their name in chat, and they will get the ability to ban people and kick them out and change your stream title and little stuff like that. But really, I wouldn't worry about it too much. If you do want to worry about it, just bring in some friends. A quick note on focus. A lot of people have trouble staying focused when they first start streaming. So if you need a little bit of assistance with that, if you need some sort of system to kind of keep you productive and help you balance reading chat all the time and actually getting work done, very common thing is just to run a Pomodoro timer, which is 25 minutes work, five minutes of chilling and reading chat or something like that. The one I recommend is Pomatez. Uh, you can just Google P-O-M-A-T-E-Z, Pomatez, and it's the first link. Uh, it should be roldenjr.github.io slash pomatez. Uh, and once you get it, it'll look a little bit like this. And if you want to add that into your scene, as we've learned with everything else, you can just hit plus, do a little window capture in this case. This is going to be pomatez. Okay. Uh, and it guessed it right away. And so you just select pomatez from the drop down, hit OK, and you can move this guy around on your screen. And so then when I hit start on pomatez, you'll see on my actual stream, the clock starts going. And so for 25 minutes, it's very clear to everybody that I'm staying focused and maybe not reading chat as much. If you want to be super effective, I would also add like a timer command in your chat bot, throw it in your title and just explain, hey, I'm doing a Pomodoro and I'm using this to focus. So with all these cool scenes that we have set up, you've got your blurs, you've got your full cam. In order to run a good stream, ideally you don't want to have to be clicking around OBS the whole stream. So really quickly, we're just going to set up some hotkeys for you so you can bounce between scenes really easily. The quickest way to do this, uh, just go to File in OBS, go to Settings, wait 10 minutes for the Settings window to open, hit Hotkeys, and then scroll until you find the name of your screen. So here's my blurred screen, and I'm just going to set Switch to Scene to like F7. Uh, and then I'm going to scroll. I have a lot of extra scenes, don't worry about it, you'll have like two. I'm on my regular screen, be F6. And I'm going to hit Apply, and OK. And so now, if I hit F7, just like that, I'm blurred. I hit F6, I'm off of Blur. And so this little setup will just make it so much, so much, so much easier. When you're about to open a secret, you just click the F7 button, you're in. You click the F6 button, you're back. You can also do the same thing for the full camera so that you can swap just like this, like I am. All right, and so for many people, this is perhaps the number one topic, uh, but how the hell do you actually make money on Twitch? Before I say anything, you should never rely on Twitch for income. It is extremely inconsistent. It is 99% donations based and Overall, not a reliable revenue source, even when you're successful, even when you get to my stage. I'm going to put out a whole nother video on why that's true sometime. But for now, just know that that's true, and please, please manage your own expectations with this. The way that you get money on Twitch is by becoming an affiliate. This unlocks the ability to get people to subscribe, to give you money through bits, which are their special donations, and a bunch of other stuff, all of which I'll describe in the other video. But when you're just starting out, you will not have access to any of that, so it does not matter. The only thing that you need to set up, if you really are concerned with revenue from truly day one, is a tip page. There's really no wrong way to do a tip page. Uh, there's a lot of people that offer making a tip page. I'm just going to show you two really quickly that you can do. If you head back to StreamElements.com, you go to the dashboard, uh, you go to Revenue, you can go to se.pay click this and you can start getting set up and they'll make you a little tip page. This one's kind of good because it does credit cards and everything. Uh, and I think it's better for like different countries because there's more ways to uh, withdraw the money uh, to different places. But you can also literally just do paypal.me or any other kind of straight people can give you money uh, link. Doesn't really matter. What I would recommend most of all is just that whatever you do do, you go to twitch.tv slash your name and you add it in as a uh, panel on the front screen. So please mute. Oh God. 
uh, you scroll down to here, you hit those edit panels, and you add one of these. So you can see even I have a donate one right here. So when they click on this, it'll take them straight to the donation link. That's pretty powerful. Again, it's probably the most important place to have it. If that's not enough and you really feel like you want to go for the affiliate thing and like you want to get set up as soon as you can to start making money, I'm going to just link a video in the description about some things to consider before becoming a Twitch affiliate. My honest opinion is even though I'm about to link you a 40 minute video on why you should never become an affiliate, I don't really think it's that big of a deal. In worst case, you can always kind of back out of the contract. The money may not be great, but it is good and it is helpful and as much as it can make it sound very bad, it is still a thing that you should do your own research on. And so I'm going to give you this video as a way to do your own research. It's by Devin Nash. He's very good. Uh, he has a lot of information on stuff that you wouldn't otherwise think about. But do not take it to be end-all, be-all, fact, decision maker. I'm not telling you don't be an affiliate. I'm just telling you be sure to be aware of what you're getting into before you do it. Finally, the absolute most important thing to know before you start streaming, is that you can do this. Streaming is hard, and it's it's not for everybody, and you might find out you don't like it. It can be taxing, it can take a lot out of you, but don't be afraid to start. Because you just watched 35 minutes worth of assurance that you now have everything. The distance between you and a good stream is the single click of the start streaming button at this point. So please, please don't be afraid. I have seen so many people get to this point, get fully set up, but struggle so hard to click that button. And honestly, even I do some days. But I promise you, I promise you, it will be worth it to try. Because what you find on the other side might change your life and it did change mine. If you've made it to this point in the video, I have an offer for you. There's gonna be a link in the description all the way at the bottom to a Discord server. That is my Discord server for my channel. And there's a channel on that Discord server that is called self-promotion. Please, I want to see you start. Come into my Discord and post in the self-promotion channel whenever you go live. And if I happen to be ending my stream anywhere near when you're live, I will do my best to raid you and support you because I want to see you succeed. Beyond that, do me a favor if you got to this point and just comment below the video. I put more effort into this video than pretty much any video that I've ever made. So it'd be good to know if people really did get a lot out of it. Uh, and feel free to subscribe here or come hang out on Twitch and ask me any questions about streaming, any questions about anything in any way that I can help. And I look forward to seeing you live.